So why is the curl of the gradient of a scalar field always equal to zero? Well, if we take that scalar field F must be continuous, for all f, then the gradient of f will also have, it will be a vector field of no curl. So how, is this, how does this work? So the gradient, again, of f is just changing the scalar f. This should, some people use a vector sign above it. It's not a true vector, but uh, the gradient operator is the spatial derivative operator that will tell you the direction of most increase on a scalar field like f. So partial partial x of f i plus partial partial f partial partial y, partial f partial y of j plus partial f partial z Okay, this is the vector field created by taking the gradient of the scalar field F. So, scalar field, a common example is temperature. Uh, so why, why would this new field have no curl? So, curl is when the derivative operator is cross product with another vector. So, we start now the determinant of the curl matrix V. And the i, j, k, just the unit vectors in the top. Center is, if we're doing del cross gradient F, then del is the middle line. So partial, partial X, partial, partial Y, and partial, partial Z. Now, what is gradient F? It's right here. Partial F, partial X, partial F, partial Y, and partial F, partial Z. Now, if we take the determinant of this, it should equal zero. So, let's try it. For the I component, we have partial, partial X times partial F, partial Y, which gives us partial f, partial x, or partial squared f, partial x, partial y, minus, so we already did that, partial, partial y, times partial f, partial x, and you'll see those are the same thing. Given that f must be continuous, it does not matter which way you, which order you take spatial derivatives in. So you end up with the same thing, partial squared f over partial x, partial y, and that's your I component. And this pattern repeats. So if you start your next column for the J, you have, and this is equal to zero. So plus your J component now, which is just going to be partial partial Y times partial F partial Z, which is partial squared F over partial Y partial Z minus, and again, it's going to, this should, pattern should repeat. Partial, partial z times partial f partial y. This is going to be the same exact thing. And what we get is 0i plus 0j plus 0k. You can, you can do the rest of the cross reference. You can get 0. And this is why it always returns a 0 vector when you take the curl of the gradient of a scalar field.